Whenever okay. you're ready. Good. Hi, my name is Dave Markley, and what I want to do on this video today is kind of show you what a lot of people um, talk about as a mini flusher, whether it's worth its price that you pay for one, or if it's worth buying. On a lot of feedback on the websites, they find out that they think it's a gimmick. Personally, I don't think it is. If you know how to use one right or use proper techniques, I'm going to explain a few things that I do that might help you along today. I do have a big well flesher that I use for my shaving. But this is my mini flesher. But before we get started, I've got a raw cape here that we're going to be flushing shortly. Now, we probably won't go through and show you the whole thing. But once I get started and I'm fleshing the body, my main objective is number one, show you how easy it fleshes. And I can also flesh it without a big mess. That's one thing that people talk about. Well, if you use these, it's a big mess. Basically, all I wear is a shop apron. I don't have anything on my walls. I have very few pieces on my floor. We'll show you that at the end. But I'm going to show you about flesh and the cake. But more importantly, I want to show you how uh, effective it is around splitting the eyes and the lips, the nose, and also getting most of your ear, if not all of your earbud out. Before we get that, when you first get your mini flesher, I think two important things. When you get the blade, the blade is very, very sharp, brand, brand new out of the box. I agree that it is all too sharp. So the first thing that I do is, is I want to dull this blade down to where if you looked at mine really, really close, uh, the teeth are almost barely visible on it. So what I like to do is if I get a brand new blade, is I'll take a pipe or a piece of pipe and run that against a pipe, a good metal, so that what it does, that breaks that, them teeth down so that they're not as sharp as what they are brand new. That's one important thing. When you start your fleshing, the, 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 the duller it is, the better it is. If it is brand new, you throw a brand new flesher on a hide, it's going to cut, it's going to pull, and it's not going to be very fun to use. Second thing I found is that on the hand piece where you can pull it, this comes with a, I guess you would want to call it a safety feature. I take that out. You can see that with the camera. I take that out so at any time I grab the, the thing or the mini factor, I can control it and go with whatever pressure that I want to. And I don't have to use both hands. I just pick it up, grasp it, and it goes right to work. So I think that was a big advantage taking this piece out, at least it was for me. Drawback of this is, is it does take a large air compressor. So I've got a big air compressor out in another room in my shop, but it does require a large air compressor, so that is a disadvantage. But as far as me and the big well flesher, I like my small one for rough flushing. I've tried it both ways. I can get it done just as fast with this, and plus I can use this splitting the eyes and the nose and the ears, whereas my big well flesher I can't do that with. So I'd rather just dirty up one tool. I get it done just as quick. And you'll find out when I'm done, I'll flesh this all and have it pretty much in one piece, the flesh itself. So the membrane's actually gone too, which allows a very good uh, penetrating effect for the hide. So uh, the more that salt can penetrate that hide, the better off that you're going to be through your tanning process uh, as you're working on that particular deer. So as you, as you can see, I've got a, a six inch piece of PVC mounted that I can remove very easily. Uh, when I do my flushing, I put this on. When I'm done, I take it off. I'll put the cape on this. Something else that I want to show you is I'll use later on. This is called a flushing ball. This actually was made by a gentleman by the name of Bob Frobeater from Indiana. He's part of the Association of Indiana Taxidermists. Uh, he made this ball. I don't know if you can still get them from Wasco, but at one time that's where I got mine from. Basically, it's an imi uh, imitation light bulb where you can drape the eyeballs and the lips and stuff over it. We'll show you how we use that later. But you can see I have a rough cake. I'm just going to take it, invert it, and this is the mouth. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work from the face all the way back. So this is how I start my fleshing. I start it right here. And usually I just pull my sheets up so that way when I do move stuff around, I've got ways to, I've got some place to set my flusher. So this is the biggest pain is moving this around throughout the process, but it's not that big of a deal for me. As you can see, I got the nose, I've got both eyes, 
But what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this cape up and get started up in this area. And then I'm going to move around those and go all the way down. So. Now, I'm going to stop periodically where I would continue fleshing, but you can see just what few seconds I fleshed a circle out right there, and this is all still in one piece right there, just a small piece. halfway through the face already. I'll make a circle around each eye and that's what I'll leave for um, over at the fleshing ball here in just a little bit. You can get as close to the eye as you want. Um, I'll leave about an inch circle all the way around. I got the top part of the face done. I'm just going to keep rolling this over. I'm going to get close to my ear butt. I'm going to keep working around this eye. As you can see, that's the circle I'm talking about. I will leave that alone for right now. I'll come up, this is the bottom side, this is the lip, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to start going, I'm not going to split the lips right now, I'm just get, getting the bulk of the flesh off. <laughs> okay, as you can see, lips are still intact, but this is all the way down to the hide. Salt on that's going to get a real, real nice penetration. It's going to set that hair and kill the bacteria. <laughs> now, when I get to my ear butt, same thing. I'm just going to kind of make a circle around here, leave the ear butt intact for just a little bit. <laughs> that ear butt alone. Take just a little bit more off. And then basically I'm going to flip this around and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Come around this eye, get started around the ear butt and come around. We'll go ahead and shut the video off for right now so that way you don't have to watch every ounce of this. But when I get to the body here in a little bit we'll kind of give you an idea where we're at. 